All right, this quick demo is going to be on taking GIS information that we'll have in Carlson Survey coming from Esri and showing all the data, then creating a subset of that data parcels in a certain area and output that as a shape file from Carlson Survey, which we then in turn will upload into ServeCE and load it in ServeCE so that we can edit some of the data and create new data. So first thing I want to do is go up to GIS and do GIS database settings. I have a brand new, I do select right here, and I'm going to pick this file right there. That's brand new. I'm going to do copy, call it new, and overwrite the previous one. Then I'm going to do single file type database, pick select, and select new SQL light format. And I'm going to come over here, do paste. And that's all going in the G colon backslash Carlson projects backslash 2016 backslash Montville. So I pick save and exit. So that step is done, creating the uh, two files. And the next thing I want to do is just import Esri shapefile. I pick here and I pick select. It's existing and I want to browse and I'm going to go back and select this file, go into this file, and there is the entire, um, all the shape, all the parcels for the county in this area. So I'm going to pick open. And right now it says it is a polygon file. The layer that I want to put it in will be parcels and create select feature code. And I'll just call this parcel. And now I do import polylines from shapefile. And if you can see down there, it's counting up the percentage. All right, it's done. Let's go up to view, do extents, and there is the data. Now, let's view window. Um, a busy area. How about this area right here? So we'll see about loading this quadrant of data. How about this area right here? So what I want to do is go to GIS and do export Esri shapefile. And it says new. And I'm going to call this area 2 right there. And we're putting it in this direction. I'm going to actually browse and go down one and put it in. I'll make a new directory and just call this area two. Enter, enter, and come down here and call it area two. Open, and we'll pick save. Now it says select entities. This is a CAD routine, so I can type CP for crossing polygon. And here I can just come down and pick a crossing polygon that envelops all those lots on that side. So I think I've grabbed everything. And now I hit enter for no more entities. And it says um, export all. I'll do export all. And I'm just going to pick OK. I'm going to put it on pause while we're waiting. OK, it's done. It took about a minute. And we now have that file. So at this point, I'm going to minimize across the survey. And before I create a new file, I'm going to bring up Windows Mobile Device Center. Go to File Management, Browse. We're going to go to G Drive, Across some Projects 2016. And we're going to go to Montville, Area 2. And those are the files that we want to grab. I do Copy. 
And now we go back to computer and I'll scroll down. There's Carlson Software Surveyor 2 plugged in by a USB serial port. Go to program files, serve CE, data, and we're going to create a new directory here, new folder, and we're going to call it Montville. Enter, enter. And now I'm going to do paste. And there's the four files. We'll change it to details so we can see them. Now that's done. We minimize this, minimize mobile device center. We're going to do select a new existing file. And we're going to scroll over here. There's Montville. And we're going to call this area. Now the first time I load, I'm in New York East, I want to be in Connecticut, so I have to add a predefined NATE83 zone. Scroll down till we find Connecticut. There's only one zone for Connecticut. It is NATE83. And that's highlighted. I pick the green button. And now that's set. I pick this. And I'll continue without connecting. I'm going to actually go up here and pick GPS simulation. That's set up. And I'm going to go to localization here. I'm not going to localize yet, but I'm going to pick GPS, pick geoid file. And I created a geoid file. In, oh, I didn't create it here. So I have to upload it from the G drive Call some projects 2016 Montville GSF I'm looking for a GSF file there it is I'll do copy we'll go back to computer scroll this down double pick here double pick there double pick on program files serve CE data and Montville and do paste and there's the geoid file minimize them both again and we'll pick Montville and there's the geoid file and to give you the proper Z elevations and Pat at Superior Instruments can certainly fill you in on this or help you with this okay at this point I'm just gonna hit the green button to exit out and not completely and at this point, if I go to File, go to Points, you can see there's no points in the file. And if I go to the Map screen, which is the World up here icon, and do File, and go to Shape File, Import Shape File, and do Select Shape File, you can see that there it is, Area 2. So I'll pick this. Defaults to the name of the CRD file, which is the same name. And right now it says Layer, and I'm going to pick this layer right there, code name, it's going to be parcel, and pick OK. Process done. Hit the back key at this time. If you hit the green button, you just do it over and over and over again. So you hit the back key, and there is just the area of interest. Apparently, I must have grabbed that area, and that was in the middle of that uh, open area right here. So uh, if we want to edit one of these, I can go to Tools, Pick Edit, Input Edit GIS Data, and if I window up and now I want to pick inside this one, so I grab just this one. Again, you type P for Pick, and if you pick inside a lot, it will grab that lot. And there it is, Point ID 1273. It's a parcel. Object ID, I'll do next. Object, we have parcel, uh, LED, we have pro, all right, municipality, 86, area. And I'm looking for, if I go back previous here, I have lot 42. Let's go to next, next, next. All right, and there's the street address. And uh, 12 Benjamin 
court. All right, street number 12. All right, at this point, if I wanted to save something, uh, say something here and just say, oh, 12 inch, well, uh, I can then save it. And we'll go back. All right, so we've edited that one right there. If you do S for select, you have to pick on the edge. So if I pick on this edge, it probably is the same one. We'll find, we'll scroll down until I see um, water. And it should say 12 inches. 15 Benjamin. And water, no, it's 15 um, right there. So I don't see it right there. So we'll say 6 inches here. And I'll save that one. Do save. Or back. And so that edited those two. Now if I type P for pick again, pick inside this one. Oh, you know what? I think I picked this one. That's different. That's why. Next, 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 next. Nope. Actually, it was a different one. Okay, let's let's exit that one and let's pick this one. Go to next, 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 next. Twelve Benjamins Court, and there's the twelve inches. Okay. So there's the advantage of using the P for pick option so you can pick inside the lot so you know exactly the lot that you're picking as opposed to select. Apparently I picked the inside of the cul-de-sac, which must be a lot. Um, at this point, we're going to just pick escape to exit out. We've edited this. And before I exit out completely, I'm going to go to Kogo and do create points. And we only need to create one point, so I'm going to go to draw locate points. And I'm going to pick an endpoint. And I'm going to pick that endpoint there. So the little pencil shows you where it's going to be. I'll say 275, just make up an elevation. And hit enter. And it says for description, I'll just say start. And that will be point number one for right there. So now we're going to hit escape. And we're going to exit out of the map screen. We have point number one at that location. And what I want to do is go to Equipment. If you had a Virtual Reference System, GPS, GNSS, Virtual Reference System, you wouldn't have to do this. But because we're in GPS simulation, I have to localize on some point in this map to get on this map so I can show you how to add GIS information. I showed you how to edit GIS information uh, in the map screen by picking it, but I certainly uh, want to show you how you can create fire hydrant information. So I'm going to pick point number one, read GPS, pick this guy right here, and it says 30 samples for localization. And we're just going to wait for it to say fix. It does say fix. We're in simulation. So we're just going to say stop averaging and store. It's good enough for me. I don't have to go through all 30 points. Okay, and we can save it. But if we exit out, it's going to automatically want to save it. And I'll just pick OK. Okay, at this point, I want to go to File, and I want to show you feature code lists. And right now, uh, I want to do um, set, and it says code, description, category. All right, this is uh, right there. And... I want to load a new one. And I could go into DT, uh, DOT codes. And you can see there's a lot of codes in here. And they're not all DOT. Some of them, it looks like most of them are. But uh, needless to say, um, here I'm going to go up one. I'm just going to type. Uh, I'm going to go to Modville. And I'm going to create a new code table. Uh, it does not exist. The program will create a new empty FCL, that is a code table. Would you like to continue? Yes. So it's blank. I'm going to come up here and um, do add. Uh, 
Okay, I came over here and I already created this data, but I have to, because I created the code table after the fact, uh, that code that I created parcel is in the other code table. So I'm going to erase everything. This is not a step if you uh, if I did it in the right order, but now I'm going to go to File. I'm going to do Shape. I did this before. Import Shape File. Select Shape File. Area 2. Layer is going to be Disk Text. And the code name is going to be Parcel. So it's going to make this code automatically with the GIS prompting stored from the shape file. And I'll show you that shortly. So I should have done this step first and not brought the information or the shape file in. Oh, I picked the green button. I'm trying to rush. This is what happens when you rush. It just duplicated it. I'm just going to pick the back button. And there is the data. And my edits are lost now because I overwrote them. Go to Feature Code List, and we should see one code. If I do Edit, you'll see it came in as a 2D polyline at zero elevation. If I go to Edit Features, you can see that there's all the prompting. And it doesn't show you the data, but it shows you the prompting for these apartments being the last one there. And I did want to show... Well, actually, this is good. Now, I'm going to create a code. Most of the time, you use shape files. You don't create codes. But I'm going to add a new code. And I'm going to call this HYD. And I'll do caps lock. HYD. <laughs> and we're going to do, uh, forget about symbols. We're going to do layer. It's going to be hydrant. Hydrant. Full text, and this will be fire hydrant. And um, color, uh, we're not doing anything in color, but I'll just pick uh, magenta, purple, and now it's a point. And new feature, this is where you create the GIS information. And you would do type, no spaces in the name for prompt. This would be hydrant type or Hydrant man, you factor. <laughs> and right now, you would just go down and say, can it D? And we'll do Turkey. And do another one and just say China. All right. And the default is Kennedy. We'll leave it at that. Required? Yes. You have to answer that question. And we will pick OK. So that's one code. Now we want to do condition. So I do add, and I'll do condition. And here you can just use the same word right there. And now I come up here, and I'll say good. Enter. Enter. And I'll say OK. Enter. Enter. And pour. Enter. And Right now, we're going to say good is the default. And yes, you have to answer this one. And I could go on, but you get the idea how this is done. So I save it. There it is. And pick OK. And we have two right there, two codes. So I pick the black button, say save changes. Absolutely yes. All right. So there you have it. And now at this point, I come up here. And if I go to Tools, do Edit, Input Edit GIS Information. And right now I say P to pick. You can only edit information that already exists. So you can see here it is. I pick P inside this lot. And I'm going to do Next, Next, Next. Next, next, and I think we'll eventually see 12 Benjamin Court. And here we'll just type in 6 inches. So it's a 6-inch water pipe. And I'll do Save and Exit. Plus Parcel right there. I think I pressed Save. Yes, I did. Let's do one more. I have Pick on there, and I'm going to pick um, the one next to it right there inside. So if this was 12, this one here, and we'll 
do next, 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 next. And that is 15. And we'll do next, and I'll say 8 inch here. 8 inch. <laughs> Now, one thing I want to tell you is that the plus here tells you that this GIS code is current. Don't pick hydrant when you're editing. I mean, it's already preset to set the current object that you select, the parcel. But uh, be aware that if it was two polygons and you accidentally picked inside another polygon thinking it was parcel, be very careful to look up here and see the plus next to the GIS feature you think you're editing. In this case, it is correct parcel. So right now I'm going to do save, pick the back button. And if you did accidentally uh, pick the wrong one, it uh, should show up different GIS information. Anyway, at this point, I'm going to hit escape and come down here. And now we want to go to survey to add some GIS information. So I go to store points, fire hydrants in this case, not the parcels. And you can see that we're really close to this location. I'm going to turn this over. We're going to zoom in. It says 30 feet. All right, right here, it's a fire hydrant. We hit enter, we store, and it comes up and says hydrant or parcel being a polygon. You can see it shows you that. So I'm going to say hydrant, and right now I pick the green button. I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> to find out later. And now it's going to come up with the GIS prompting. And it says it's Kennedy. And let's just say it's made in China. And we'll just say it's OK. And we pick store. And there you have it. And let's just create another one. And I'll pick this guy right here. And that's going to be hydrant again. And I pick here. And I'm going to come down here and say China. And we'll say this one's in poor condition. So I'll pick this and store it. OK, at that point, let's say I wanted to edit point number two. So I pick two and I do edit. And I do input edit attributes. And let's say that this actually was a Kennedy and I made a mistake for the type. So I come up here and I pick Kennedy. Save it. And then the last thing I want to show you is how do you remeasure a, a, an existing uh, feature? So I'm going to hit the green button here and come back here. Now, at this point, let's say I come back, and let's say that when I stored that point, um, it wasn't actually right where the hydrant was. So now I'm going to say it's going to be right there. So now I don't store a point and pick store or hit enter. I actually pick the point. That's the little point symbol right there. And if you do want to go to the map screen here and go view data, nope, nope, sorry, sorry, and go to here. Go to Map Screen and go to View and go to View Options. Uh, you can say, hey, I want to display little X's or pluses, not dots, for the symbol. This is just globally all the symbols. So now I want to pick this guy right here. Oh, I'm in the Map Screen. That's why. Okay, now I pick this guy. You can see the little X, and I want to remeasure it. So I level up the bubble on the GPS right over the location of where 0.3 really exists. I go to remeasure. I'm leveled up. It shows me where it currently thinks it is right here, the dot. But I'm going to put it over here. I go to store. And I say hydrant. Pick this guy right there. And that's how spatially you can move the point, in this case, 0.3. And uh, OK, and at this point, let me go out of minus here and window up. Now, be aware, point 0.1 has no GIS information. But if I pick point 0.1, I can also remeasure just regular points if I made a mistake. But I'm going to just say no and cancel out. So we're done with this. And I'm going to hit the X 
I'm going to go to the World button here, the Map, and we're going to go to File, and we're going to do Shapefile. Except this time we're going to pick Export Shapefile. No projection has been set. Would you like to select a profile? I'm going to say no. That can be done later. I'm going to say no. And it says Export All. So it's going to export all the polygons again and the three points that I have. But only two of the points have the same GIS. And I'm going to turn that off and turn that off and turn that off. I'm just going to output exactly what was given. So I pick this. Please select Shapefile. Okay, I pick this. And I'm going to say area two underscore done. Okay, at this point, pick the green button. And we're going to hit the pause key while we're waiting. Okay, it seems to be almost done. We're waiting for it down here to say done. Okay, process done. We hit the uh, back button and exit out here of the map screen. We're pretty much done here. I'm not going to exit out. I'm just going to minimize this and bring up um, serve CE and we're going to come over to GPS and you know I'm going to do E for race oops not W block I'm going to type E enter do P for previous all right CP and we're going to pick here I picked these by accident, but it doesn't matter. I want to show the edits that I made on the lots. Okay, and now we're going to go to GIS and do import shape files. And we'll do select shape. Oh, you uh, certainly have to go back here and do file management, browse. Go to the G drive. Carlson Projects, 2016. Um, go to Montville. Oh, it's uh, it's on the data collector. Sorry. First, Program Files, Serve CE, Data, Montville. Let's change back to Details. And there is the area done right there so I do copy G drive across and projects 2016 um, Montville area 2 I'll paste it in there okay so I actually want to bring this in because I edited some of the lots I'll minimize this and now I'm ready to go to GIS import do select shape file area done we'll pick the parcel and right now I'm just going to do the same thing I did before call it parcel parcels then parcel and away I go and there they are and if I window up and I do input at a GIS data and down here I type P for pick and I pick right in here enter to select and we scroll down there it is 12 Benjamin Court street number 12 water hmm not for sure I edited that I didn't edit this one. Yeah, that one I didn't edit. Anyway, let's bring in the fire hydrants. That I expect will come in correct. All right, import. Pick inside. It still thinks hasn't canceled this command.
Okay, we're just going to bring in the fire hydrants now. Import Esri shapefile, pick selector, and we're going to uh, go to browse, go down one, go to area two, and there is the hydrant one. Pick OK and pick open. And right now, we're going to say this is hydrant one. And hydrant. Right now, import um, type. It's a point, and we're going to import this into a coordinate file, and it's going to create this coordinate file there. Import. It just I'll say yes. Draw these two points. Um, we'll call this H Y D. So we put it in its own layer, and draw all two points. And there they are, right there. Go up to GIS. Input out of GIS information. Pick anywhere on the symbol, and there you have it. Type and condition. And pick OK, and come down to here. And China and poor for condition. So there you have it. That's how you can go back and forth between creating shape files to import into ServeCE, and then editing and creating new points, fire hydrants in this case, and bringing them back uh, into uh, Carlson serves CE and you could replace Esri for Carlson serves CE because both Esri and Carlson serves CE in the office read and write shapefiles. Thank you.